So, folks, my goodness, Trump is having a morning meltdown today, and it's all because he just got crushed in an emergency surprise secret hearing by Fonnie Willis down in Georgia. Now, remember, Donald Trump was originally not going to surrender, apparently. You know, that was at least his rhetoric. Who knows if he would have followed through, but he just made, he just took a big defeat that's made it clear that he is going to be forced to hand himself in and what's happening right now is he is attacking Fonnie Willis more brutally than usual because of this secret surprise last second defeat but also everyone's reacting to what it's going to be like when Trump surrenders how he's going to try to make it all about himself but how when he and his cronies see the conditions of the jail cells when they see the conditions that regular people are locked up in they are going to plead guilty real quick hit the like and subscribe button and let's start with what Donald Trump said about Fonnie Willis this morning. And of course, he's been attacking her and threatening her for weeks, if not longer. But it was especially vitriolic this morning. And it's because of this breaking news and this defeat we're going to talk about and all of the reactions to his surrender. And it says here, Trump then lashed out at Fonnie Willis. This was not the only person he lashed out at this morning, to be fair, when he said failed DA Fonnie Willis, who has allowed Atlanta Fulton County to become a record setting murder and violent crime war zone with almost no retribution shockingly indicted your favorite president me for a perfect phone call that she is bad she is bad for america and then he later added i easily won the state of georgia in 2016 did a fantastic job as president for georgia and the entire usa received 10 million more votes than i got nationwide in 2016 got by far the most votes and he goes on and say this that i quote unquote lost georgia it's absolutely ridiculous what trump is saying there one it is not record crime 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 rates in the United States in general, the pandemic was a bit of a blip, although the pandemic happened under Trump's watch, have been going down. Crime rates are, rates are significantly lower now than they were 20, 30, 40 years ago. 100%. They really are. This hysteria from the right is just a way to excuse Donald Trump's criminality. But here's where it gets really interesting, because again, because of this secret morning defeat, last second defeat, now Trump has switched his rhetoric from I'm not going to surrender to I'm going to do it in a way that basically pisses everybody off, including this potential outcome. Than initially imagined that it would be. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I go back to the 2016 race where we had the happy hour debate and then we had the, the main stage mm -hmm. debate, right? And I don't know, when you start getting folks on the stage that are at the one and two and three and four percent, like it, it's not really helping any of the candidates. Then I think to your, your question to Ashley was, DeSantis obviously is going to be the target in this. But I also think Vivek is going to be the target because Vivek is untested. I, if you look at the makeup of the debate stage right now, there's only five or six that have actually have any debate experience. And quite frankly, only one or two that have debate experience with multiple candidates on the stage at this level. And so you're going to find that each one of them are trying to figure out how do we put out our policies, but also how do we have that repost, you know, response that that's just witty and that will be remembered and a meme will be made out of it. And then they can capitalize on that moving forward. Yeah. I mean, how does this look? Though? I mean, Donald Trump right now is not expected to show up. He has until Monday at nine o'clock to make that official, I guess. But our, our I mean, candidates are kind of having to prepare. Does he show up? Does he not? They're kind of prepping for two different debates, potentially. Well, See, I don't think they should be, though. I think that you should be very clear in your vision of what you want to do as president, regardless of Donald Trump. And that has to be, I'm either going to say Donald Trump was wrong and be very clear, whether he's on the dis debate stage or not. But when people are trying to, well, if he's not there, I'm going to... You can attack Donald Trump without him being here and saying he's wrong and then talk about your vision. You can attack him with him being here and be very clear about your I, vision. I agree. I, I think, quite frankly... My guess, and I'm probably I'm at about 30 percent chance that this is going to happen. But I think Donald Trump is going to turn himself in either be right before the debate or during the debate, mm -hmm. which will suck all the oxygen out of the room. And then Fox is stuck having to air the debate, whereas you and other networks are able to say, wait a minute, Donald Trump has actually just turned himself in. And then there's Tucker Carlson waiting on the steps of the courthouse, able to interview him right there. The jail is open 24-7, they said. We'll see. Jason Osborne, Ashley Allison, thank you both. 
With Trump's next surrender pending, we'll talk to someone who was once inside Trump world, what she makes of the situation that he's now facing. But first tonight, to the extremely powerful hurricane that is barreling toward. Now, a lot of people are saying this, that we, we, this is different than than the federal arraignments and even the New York arraignment Donald Trump had, which was basically, uh, you know, you you you've been charged, you've been indicted. Um, you need to show up at the court at this date, at this time, and we're going to do that process, right? And that was sort of negotiated with Trump and his team. And that was very much like, you know, he, he, here's the date and time of your punishment to start, right? And this is different. Fonnie Willis is saying, you all have until August 25th to show up anytime you like. And while I'm sure there's going to be some calls between the two sides, because of security, media, all of that, what people are now suggesting is Trump, out of spite, is going to do it during the Fox debate or something. And while I do think that's sort of funny, we can't ignore the fact that a few days ago, Trump was like, I'm not surrendering. I'm not giving up. I'm going to fight this tooth and nail. You had Trump allies on the website, on, on Twitter and stuff, saying he should just stay in Florida. Make 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 the federal marshals come and arrest him. Make a, you know Have a, a, a Republican governor defend him. They were really getting ready for Donald Trump to barricade himself in the house and that's not going to happen now apparently because of these late late like last second court defeats that have made that move even less possible than before but here's where it gets really interesting because what people are saying is Donald Trump is going to become very very weak when he seals what sees what real jails are like lawyer so Ty you heard Paul is reporting right that the, it's expected that Trump will his team will negotiate on Monday for what his actual surrender would look like, right? Because if you show up without doing that in Fulton County, the typical uh, situation is you could be booked for 72 hours in the jail. Uh, that, that's how it works there. Uh, so we do expect that he's going to negotiate ahead of time. But do you think, uh, like in those other indictments that Paula referenced, that they'll make exceptions so that Trump doesn't have to have a mugshot or go through any of the other standard things that would involve treating him like anyone else in Georgia? So I would expect that they will, um, you know, accelerate his processing in the sense of he won't have to sit on a bench with a bunch of felons waiting to see who's next. Uh, I think he will, um, you know, be handled with respect. The Secret Service will be there. I think the Secret Service is uh, uh, likely to conduct whatever, you know, search is required of, you know, processing um defendant um, uh, and that the um, uh, Fulton County Sheriff will accept their search. I don't think he'll be um, uh, sub subjected to, you know, any uh, uh, physical uh, search personally by the Sheriff's Office. But I do think they will insist on the mugshot and the um, um, fingerprinting uh, because that does seem to be uh, routine there. And, uh, you know, Fonnie Willis has said that's going to happen. So I, I would expect that that will happen. I would accept, expect that the mugshot will be immediately forwarded to Trump's PR people and that they'll be raising money off of it before he leaves the, uh, the jail. Right, right. Well, I mean, certainly they'll seize it as something they can use in their in their advantage if they can. So you've got the possibility of a mugshot or the probability of a mugshot. It's just I think that's probably the accurate word at this point, probably um, it, it being taken to the former of a former president of the United States. Right. I mean, that's momentous. Um, but he's yes. also going to be going tied to this jail, uh, which has a reputation of, of, of bad conditions. You heard how that defense lawyer had described it. It's uh, obviously under DOJ review. So even just being there, going to a place like that, does that have any impact, do you think, on Trump psychologically? I, I have been there. I have interviewed a witness there um, uh, many years ago, and it is uh, decidedly substandard by any standard, but certainly by Trump standards. And I do think uh, it will have some, you know, some impact. Remember, Donald Trump hasn't really spent time in jail in this process and certainly not the kind of jails they have in Atlanta. And look, I'm not defending these jails. What I think is richly ironic is right wing politicians like Donald Trump have pushed for some of the most inhumane conditions for prisoners, be it whether they're, whether not convicted in jails or whether, you know, long term convicts in federal and state penitentiaries. Right. They have made conditions inhumane for criminals. And whatever you think about criminals 
criminals, some of whom have done awful things and do deserve punishment, in conditions in American jails and prisons are inhumane relative to the rest of the developed world. And it doesn't work because crime recidivism rates in the United States are higher than in countries like Canada, the Scandinavian countries and things like that, where prisons are better, right? They, they're nicer. The prisoners are treated with better respect and dignity, even the heinous ones. And as a result, crime is less likely to happen in those countries. Right. Because you're, you're not treating people like animals. You're even treating awful people like people. But these right wingers all of a sudden now are going to the jails that they built and that their Republican buddies built. And this kind of goes into it further, how maybe this applies less to Trump because he's still got a secret service, but it applies to his right wing cronies as well. And they're the ones who are likely to flip. Trump motorcade in and out of his previous court appearances, John. I mean, do you think that this surrender... Uh, could hit Trump a little differently than the ones that came before in that this is, I mean, as somebody who is kind of the master of the spectacle, I don't think this is the spectacle that uh, he really wants to see or be a part of. No, the, the, yeah. the jail he's going to surrender at is a hellhole. It has been, it's received a lot of negative and national attention. Uh, I think any of the defendants in this newly charged case uh, who get a whiff of that place uh, may think twice about whether they want to stand trial or try to work out a deal. Uh, I don't think Trump will do that. He's always the double down guy. Uh, but, I, you know, I hope they do treat him like any other person uh, and don't give him special treatment. But he does have a Secret Service detail that has to protect him. So that will make some exception. Yeah, it's going to be a wild scene, uh, Mark and Van. Uh, I mean, Mark, let me just go to you. If, if 18 people get mugshots and Trump does not, if he somehow manages to not get a, a mugshot next week, although, I mean, from what the sheriff is indicating, it sounds like this is going to happen. But if he doesn't, how is that going to play? Well, I, I think if the other 18 are, then he's likely to, what we're seeing from this judge increasingly is that uh, she doesn't intend to treat him any differently than the rest of the defendants. The thing that's unprecedented and, and fascinating about next week is that uh, on the one hand, we're going to have a national Republican debate where Trump will not be on stage. Uh, and yet just the following day, he will be in a federal courthouse where we may see a mugshot. So we may see a mugshot of Donald Trump, but we won't see his face on the national stage in the debate, uh, which is an interesting uh, diametrically opposed uh, visual that we're not used to seeing with Donald Trump. So I think this is an interesting moment, guys, a fascinating moment where Donald Trump's people are losing their minds, where he's losing his mind, where Fonnie Willis scored a surprise courtroom victory that made Donald Trump's not surrender plan impossible. And now he's going to. And while he thinks at first that maybe this is a way for him to win another media cycle, when he sees the jail system that he loved to support when it was poor black people getting locked up without any due process, now that he and his mafia Rico thugs are getting locked up, at least alleged mafia Rico thugs, now they're going to see what it's really like.